Hello and welcome again to this uh, week of new beginnings. I'm grateful God for the opportunity to share God's word with you. One thing I know is that the Lord is ministering to you through this year, speaking to us even as we fast. And I know uh, in the last um, few days, the Lord has been speaking to us. And I pray that today the Lord will speak to us even as we continue to consider uh, the Lord in this wonderful new year. Welcome uh, to this sharing, and may the Lord bless you. I want to begin by reading God's word in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2, verse Habakkuk um, chapter 2, verse 2. The Bible says, Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets, so that a herod may run with it. Another, another version um, will say, Write down the vision and make it plain on the tablets, so that a herod may run with it. Allow us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the time you have given us to be in your presence. Even Lord, as we continue to hear your word, whatever we are, whether at home, whether going through a transport, or whether sitting somewhere in an office, Father, I pray that you may get into our spaces and speak to us, O oh God. Interrupt our day, interrupt our evening, and Lord, come through with your word to us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now, as we consider write down the vision, we are looking at two major things. And one of the things that which is the first major thing we are looking at is the issue of making sure it is written down and plain. So we talk about the vision as the second thing is that understand that your vision is only good enough if it is written and made plain. And secondly, is that it is important that when a vision comes to you that you actually write it down. Now, the servant of God was being told that, yes, you have heard these things from the Lord. Yes, it has been impressed in your heart. Yes, you are now clear what you want to do for this season. But make sure you write it down. Make it plain that even the one who is walking by will be able to see, will be able to run with it, that nobody will miss the direction you are going to. Nobody will miss that which God wants you to do. And as we begin the year, the relevance of this is that we need to write down our vision. Not just have it at the back of your mind. Not just um, put it in front, uh, uh, somewhere in front of your desk. But write it down and make sure it's plain enough for us, to, uh, for even a herald or someone who is passing by is able to see. And I tell you this, people follow a vision that is clear. Because many of us, God has given us a chance to be leaders. Whether leaders of families, or leaders at our workplace, or leaders in church, or leaders in, in uh, different groups in church, God has made us leaders. We may be the head leader, or we may be part of a leadership team, but it is important that even as a team, you come together, so you listen to the Lord as we pray and fast, but also what the Lord says to us, make it plain, write it, and write it in bold numbers. So when we think about a year's theme, we're not thinking about something that just guides our preaching uh, throughout the preaching program. No, we think about something that guides the life of our, of our members all through. So as a group, when the Lord is speaking this to you, you need to make sure it's written plainly. Now let's go through a process of how we are able to make clear the vision. Now, all of us, of course, look forward for a fulfilled life. We search a fulfilling life. Nobody enters 2024 thinking this will be a bad year or I want to live a life that will make me uh, go back or will make me shrink or decline. We all look for growth. We all look for fulfillment in life. We all look for expansion. And thank God because the kingdom of God is a kingdom of expansion like the master seed that begins to be a very small seed but when put on the ground, yet it dies and then it gives life to a seedling that is very small, but continues to grow and grow, to become a huge tree that even others may patch on it. We look forward that the kingdom of God will be mirrored in our life, that we begin small this January, but by the time we are end of December, we are that tree that people can actually come and patch. How do we do it? We say one of the most important things we need to do is to write the vision down and make it clear. Now, when you're writing down your vision, you sit down and you say, God is asking me to do this thing. So uh, one thing, nobody plans to build a house and does not sit down to count the cost. So you have to count the cost. 
you have to come and do what some corporates may call a SWOT analysis. You may check your strengths, your weakness, your opportunities, and your challenges or your threats so that you are able to say, now, here is where I want to go. How do I get there? So you begin by looking at the surrender and saying, what do I have in my hand to make me succeed? And one of the things that it's good always to clarify when you're beginning a journey, uh, in the beginning of the year, in a journey of vision, is to ask, who am I? And we look at three major things in the issue of who am I. You look at the talents that God has given you. And you're saying, God, you want me to be here. And I want to get there. So you are writing down, you want to do a planner. Because your vision will remain a dream if it is not cut down into simple, simple executable plans. Simple plans that you can execute. Simple plans that can be cut into a day-to-day -day affair. Simple plans that you can be able to say, what do I do now that fits in to the larger vision? So you ask yourself, your talents, because those gives you a head start. And what, how do you get to know your talents? Of course, you ask yourself, what are these things that I do very well that others find it hard to do? I may say as a preacher, maybe public speaking is my big, big, big plan. So even if I was to look for, I'm saying where I need to go, I need a side hustle. My side hustle will be around public speaking. Someone else would say, for me, I'm able to analyze uh, these kind of trades and I'm able to know what shares to invest in because I am talented in that area. I am skilled in that area. That will be very important. So what do I do when others fail to do? Or maybe what excites me when I see it done? Because there are things that excite you. So naturally, you use them because you do not need to push yourself to do them. You're already excited to do them. Because even when you're not doing them, when you see them done, they excite you. And so you're saying, ah, there, as I... As I you know, organize myself and my plan. I would like to organize my plan around this area because this one, I do not require extra motivation. Sometimes there are things you see done very badly and it hurts you very bad. Sometimes that points to, to an area you need to also venture in because you seem to have a standard of excellence that is not being met. There, again, those are some of the uh, 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 talents that you may have. The other issue to check is your personality. People of God, you have a big vision, but, but it is you to fulfill it. There are things that are against your personality. Because if you are an introvert, you are someone who likes to energize alone, to stay alone, to organize uh, uh, alone, and to plan alone, and to uh, uh, reflect alone. And then you begin to pick uh, activities that insist that you must be before people, that you must concentrate, be around people. Then you are sabotaging your vision. So the path to your vision has been filled with spaces where your personality is, uh, is your strength. So if you are a public person, you like being around people, you, like, you are joyous around people, you think when you are within a team, you energize when you are around a team, then you make sure that as I do my plans to meet my vision, I am following a path where I am in public, where I am with people, and I am uh, interesting people to work with me towards this vision. Okay? So, when you think about, when you write your vision, and you're asking, how do I get there? Ask yourself, what, what do I have in my hands? And we said, your talents, your personality is very important. Also, your culture and your rhythms. There are things you know that if I try this direction, it's going to fail. Because over the years, these are things I have made, I have convictions that I do not, they are not worthwhile. Others may pursue them, but you felt you're not worthwhile. They are not worthwhile. There's a culture, there are rhythms that you have been having. Don't say that this year is, what I'm, is when I'm going to do what I've never done. Surely, that will be a very uphill task. If you are able generally to organize your path towards your vision along routes of less resistance, although there is resistance, but less resistance is going to be uh, something uh, worthwhile doing. So, you're asking yourself, who am I? What do I have in my hands? Um, you, you check including your, your worth, your net worth, and you are saying, God, I have this big vision this year. And the vision could be bigger than you imagine. And you are saying, this is what I have as assets. This is what I have as my net worth. Of course, you are not planning with just what you have your net worth. You are planning with what is in the bank of God. So you are saying, practically, this is what I have. I have an amount X, 
I have X amount of assets. But where I want to go is here. So what I'm trusting God for is a shortfall between X and Y resources that I need to meet my vision. So even when you go before the Lord to pray, you're saying, God, the vision I have for this year, let me give a very personal vision so that we, we have an example. You're saying the example is that I want to build a home for my family. And that home, as I build it, I want to make sure it's also a, a, it's big enough to have a prayer room for my family. But also, I want to make sure that I also provide hosting for God's people, for missionaries, for youth who want to come and have their meeting there. So God, I want a bigger house than just for my family because my vision is bigger than myself. And I have this amount of money. But in between these and where I want to go is this X amount of money. Do you know why you get to know what you need? It's because your vision was written boldly. So because you cannot say you want to build a house for your family and you have never even asked yourself, how much does land cost around the area I want to live? You have never asked yourself, these plans, how much do they cost? I mean, even if you don't have the money, it's important that you actually have the details figured out. You say, God, I do not have the money to build, but at least I have done my survey and I know I want to live around, um, say, Kitengera. And I have known the land I need for me and my family, but also for generosity so that I can host church groups. Other district fellowships can be held in my house also. Is I need a bigger house this amount. I've been able to get a plan, a house plan. Maybe I even have a drawing. That's the much I could be able to get. And this drawing that I have, I'm going to place it in my prayer room. I'm going to place it at my desk. I'm going to pin it on the wall. I'll write this vision that God, this vision costs me 20 million. It is right here in visual. Oh God, come through for me. Come through for me. And so, to get there, I have these plans to do. I'm planning as if it all depends on me, but I'm praying knowing it all depends on God. I'm planning knowing it all depends on God. Please get that statement that we plan as if it, it all depends on us, but we pray because we know it all depends on God. And as you cast your vision, please let the vision be beyond you as a person. Let the vision be something that has eternal value, that it can actually outlive you. How do you get to know a vision is, is not good enough? Is when you realize that vision only benefits you as a person, only benefits your family, only it's about me, me and myself. A vision should go beyond you. A vision should outlive you. So this year, the vision we are going to write in bold numbers that anyone can see is a vision big enough, bigger enough than I can even uh, imagine. So, once again, we ask ourselves, what do we have? What do we need to get where we are? What are the steps we need to take for us to get there? We write them down. We give them timelines. I know we, this is a cliche, but we talk about smart goals. We talk about specific goals. You know where you want to go. This is the vision I have. This is where I want to go. You want to have measurable goals. This is, this is, you know, for me to know I have achieved. These are the indicators that I have. You want to have achievable goals. You don't want to say again, I want to uh, build this mansion in Dubai. And surely, you do not have a house already in Kenya. Could be the Lord said, I'll do these great things to you, but you need to, again to be achievable. They need to be realistic. They also need to have a timeline, time bound. Uh, 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 so that you are saying, God, this is January. I want to get these by November. So what are the actions for January? January was a prayer month, was the month I was writing down my vision. So by 31st of January, I should have been able to write down the vision, to bring the drawing, to be able to write the, 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 the way to be fulfilled, and to also make sure the timelines are clear. So February is when I am doing this towards my vision. March, I am doing this towards my vision. My first evaluation meeting shall be in April to see where I have come and to see what I need to do, either to accelerate or to throw down, because this is what is required for my vision. So May, and you plan out the whole year, and the plan is visible before you. Make sure that plan is not just in your head. It's written boldly. If you need a photo, have a photo. When I'm asking the Lord, God, send me to the nations to go and preach. 
I have a map of the world. And I'm saying specifically, I would like you to send me to uh, Asia, for example. So I'll have that map right there. So that when I wake up to pray, I see my vision right there and I pray for it. God, I am praying that at the end of, uh, of, of this year, I am done with my degree. I put it up there. I may even have a photo of a graduation. And I put it there, God, that's where I'm going the end of this year. God, take me there. And when I get this degree, it's not just for myself. I am getting it because I want also to venture into this. The vision must be written, must be clear. And I'm actually advocating for a visual aid for your vision. Make sure there's a visual aid. Whether it's a photo that you carry, whether it's a drawing that you carry, whether it's an item that shows you where you need to go, please make it clear. And the people who are very close to you, that you are in a, in a circle, should be able to know that this is where you are going. So that even when opportunity arises, you can actually, they can actually say, brother, sister, come for this because we know where you are going and this will help you go there. And even distractions will get out of your way because now your vision is clear. And you know, this is going to be a detractor for my vision. This is not going to take me where I'm going. I want to go exactly where uh, the Lord is asking me to go. So write your vision. Make it extremely plain. And of course, all this will take two major things. I have many things, but let me just say two of them. One is there is need for discipline. Discipline yourself. Sometimes when we plan all this, then we do not push ourselves towards it or put in place a discipline that brings achievement, then we get frustrated. So if I'm saying I need to wake up 30 minutes earlier than I wake up so that I can have a personal devotion with God because the vision I have is so big, unless God is involved, it will fail. So I am adding my hours of prayer. You make sure. I'm not just going to fast the 21 days. Every month, I'll fast three days. Or you can say I have a weekly day of fasting because you know you need that discipline. Secondly, you may say, for example, for me to get where I'm going, I need to put my, my physical body in shape. So I need a health plan with my eating and my exercises. I need a health plan. Discipline yourself. You're saying, I need to reduce my time on social media. You do it. Discipline yourself. You say, I need to um, cut my expenditure. You cut it. Discipline is very important. And the second thing I would like to talk about is prioritization. Prioritization. Build your priorities. It's important that it is clear that this is what comes first. This is what comes second. This is what comes third. You prioritize. I know people talk about life, work, balance, uh, life and this balance. The best is to think of it as a bias. Bias yourself towards the things that glorify God. Towards the things that have eternal perspective. Once again, write your vision in bold and make sure even a herald, one who is running, can actually see. And there is a clear path, a clear plan towards your vision. And then pray over it. Pray over it. Do not wait for tomorrow. The day you hear this word is the day you sit down and look at that uh, vision. Put it in writing. Organize a plan towards it. Then prioritize what you need to do and put discipline into it. There are things for you to achieve must fall down. And there are things and habits you must pick up this year for you to get there. My prayer for you is that the vision you are writing right now shall come to pass. And the vision you are writing now, even as you go through this week of new beginnings, that the Lord is speaking specifically to you as an individual of what you need to do. And by Sunday, even when we remember all these things on Sunday, and we put these things into memory, we are clear where we are going. And we are able to say, like Caleb, give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Because the vision is clear. It was clear when I was 65. It's clear when I'm 85. This is where I need to go. And I know God will strengthen me to get there. May the Lord bless you so much. And I thank God for the opportunity to share with you and allow us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the time you have given us to be in your presence. Thank you, Lord, because we know and we are assured. Lord, the vision we are writing it now is within your will. It is tempered in scripture. And Father, we also want to pray as we make plans, help us to make tangible plans, plans that are achievable, in chunks that can be done 
within the timelines that we have given. But also we pray for this vision. It's bigger than we imagine. It's bigger than ourselves. It's bigger than our families. I pray for this vision that it shall come to pass. Not as a servant. I add my prayer together with prayers of many people who are praying for this dear verse, oh God. I add also my voice there asking, oh of the strength, oh God. For myself, as I feel the vision I have um, in this year. But also, oh God, for everyone who is listening to me, oh Father, you will make them successful in the plans that they are planning right now. And their vision shall come to pass. As they write it down, they are writing your will on paper. And therefore, Lord, that which is not of you, remove it in our hearts and in our thoughts and in our minds. Oh that, Lord, we write only that which is within your will. As your servant, I receive no glory, or glory goes to you in Jesus' name. God bless you so much, and you're welcome to continue reasoning to this wonderful week of new beginnings. Write your vision, make it plain, that even one who runs is able to see. God bless you.